It's time for the Ron and Brian podcast. Get ready to fill your ears with the latest news, politics, current events, and whatever else we feel like talking about this week. And now, your hosts, Ron and Brian. All right. Good evening, everybody. It is Sunday night. It's eight o'clock and it is time for episode 265 of the Ron and Brian podcast. Brian, how the hell are you tonight, my friend? Listen, Ron, it has been a week of ups and downs. It has been a week of trials and tribulations. It has been a week. And I'm going to tell you something. The one thing that that I had, you know, as my rock, the thing that was holding me steady, that was my foundation, was knowing that this evening I was going to sit at this computer a little too close um, and talk to you. All right. Well, I feel the same way. It's uh, always one of the best hours of my week. And let's get right into it, as always, with our drink of the week. Drink of the week. Drink of the week. Trancher. Who's drink of the week? Drink of the week. Drink of the week. Drink. Brian, what are you drinking? You know, Ron, it's summer. It is. It's not only hot. It's hot. Podcaster summer. Hot podcaster summer. And that means it's time for me to start drinking my summer ales. Nice. All right. So this week, what do I do? I go out to Brooklyn where we have Brooklyn Breweries, Brooklyn Summer Ale. You know, Ron, summer in Brooklyn, it's all about following your impulses, winging it from beaches and barbecues to stoops and rooftops. Brooklyn Summer Ale is a refreshing, flavorful pale ale made to accompany you on all your warm weather adventures. It's refreshing. It's crisp and smooth. It has a light body, plenty of citrus flavors, and delicate hops. Enjoy on a summer day to quench your thirst. Summer Ale, it's a light and zesty beer brewed with warm temperature adventures in mind. It's the perfect companion for long summer days by the pool, in the yard, or sitting at your girlfriend's dining room table because you need to podcast on a Sunday. Beer Advocate gives this a score of 81. It's 5.0 ABV. Ron, this is Brooklyn Summer Ale from Brooklyn Brewery. Take a sip. Mm. How good is it, my friend? That's good. That's good. (laughs) All right. See, what I like is that it's heavier than a lager. Okay. It's it's, it's more flavorful than um, than a Pilsner, but it's not over the top like an IPA. Got it. All right. Well, that's very good. It's is it crushable? It is. I'm going to say I'm going to have two tonight, and that's going to be enough. All right. Good deal. It's not. I would not describe this as a crushable beer, Got Ron. It. Yes, Ron. Yes, my friend, Ron. Yes. What are you drinking? So, Brian, you often ask me to push myself out of my comfort zone. Uh, given weeks. I think the last time I really pushed myself out of the comfort zone was back uh, at the 2019 Philadelphia Podcast Festival where we were broadcasting from Tattooed Moms and I had to drink a pickle teeny because yes. the, the the crowd decided that was going to be our drink of the week that week. Well, our good friends at Tavor, uh, knowing my aversion to pickles, they reached out to me. They said, Ron, nut up or shut up. Uh, they sent me from Prairie Artisan Ales out of McAllister, Oklahoma. They sent me the Spicy Pickle Monster, Brian. Uh, This is a sour ale with dill pickles, hot sauce, habanero flavor, and FD&C yellow number five. It clocks in at a solid 5.3%. Definitely, it's got an interesting hue to it. I mean, you yeah. can definitely see the FD and C num- yellow number five at work here. Sure, it's got um, it's got a, a deceptive nose to it. You can't really smell the pickle or the pepper. Okay, so let us take a sip of this. Let's do this. <laughs> the spicy you know, pickle monster. Listen, Ron, we know your comfort zone. You, 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 you are fruity fruit. Oh, oh, oh! He's gone out of his comfort zone this week. However, what are the results? So it's not. Hold on. Oh, 
He was the first going to say it's not bad, but I think he's actually going to come back and say it's pretty good. So uh, it's sour, and I think right? that's probably what saves it. I think if they went with a straight ale, but I think mm-hmm. the sourness and the pickle aftertaste kind of complement each other. I'm not getting much of the jalapeno, though, or the hot sauce. I would have expected this to be a little bit more spicy. Keep in mind, Ron, you also have um, acclimated your body to a very high level of spice. Very true. Very true. Um, I'm going to say it. I'm giving Spicy Pickle Monster a thumbs up. If I had gotten a second can, I probably would drink it. Unfortunately, they only sent me one. um, So I can only have one this evening. Uh, But uh, I would I would give that uh, I would give that about a four point one out of five on the untapped scale. Yeah, that's great to hear. I'm very surprised. I thought you were going to hate it. I, I trust me. I went into this thinking I was going to hate it as well, uh, but I am pleasantly surprised. That's very cool. Very yes. cool. Even though um, now the question here is, did wh- whose beer looked like the dehydration? Oh, I think she's referring to this. Bronze? This definitely this looks like the urine of someone who has not had enough water. Um, that's why it's this dark color. Look at that. Yeah. The yours is clear. Yours is beautiful. Um, mine looks like, you know, you really, uh, you might need to go to the emergency room soon. Mm. Oh. All right. righty. Cool. I would say, I, I would say that um, uh, drink of the week this week was a, a great success. It was. All right. Roll it on. It's time for our beef of the week. Brian, what's bothering you this week? Um, people who deflect responsibility when they have made the mistake. Okay, that uh, seems uh, very specific, but let's. let's oh, hear, I'm going to get. Let's, I'm going to get. Let's hear what this might be. I'm going to get incredibly specific. Okay. Um, uh, as as many friends of the show know, the lady and I are, have been on the market for some 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 real estate you know they yeah. say it's the only thing that they're that, that they're not creating anymore and that's real estate we're looking for land large plot of land all right thinking about um you know i suggested we buy you know some acres upstate um you know finally i've always wanted to build that log cabin that, sure uh, i've been dreaming about you know no no computers no wi-fi just um, go off the grid just just a working, a working fireplace. Cook Finally, on write your manifesto. It. Yes, yes. Um, unfortunately, um, the lady really prefers to live in a place with some Wi-Fi. So, um, what we've agreed upon is a condominium in West New York. Okay, um, that is what we are. We, we've been looking at, and uh, as part of a, a a purchase process, Ron, you're you're a man with a significant real estate portfolio. Sure, sure you understand, exactly. you know, all the different steps that go along. One of them is this thing called a, a home inspection. Yes. You're familiar with these. Well, you, you have them uh, when you are purchasing uh, real estate. Yes. Correct. So um, you've got, uh, so, so my understanding is, is that the buyer reaches out to a home inspector uh, comes to a, a, an agreement on on date, time, whatnot, and right. the home inspector shows up on the agreed date and time, and um, does a walkthrough of the domicile, noting if there are any areas of um, uh, insufficiency that Correct. need to be corrected. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I scheduled a home inspection on um, this past Friday. Okay. With a home inspector who operates in the New Jersey market. Good start. Okay. This person was recommended from two different sources. All right. Okay. Not one, two, two. two so that's, independent. that's twice as many. They, two independent. They're, they don't even, the, the two people don't even know each other, but they both recommended this guy. So I reached out to him. Uh, we had a great conversation. He walked me through his process, his costs. I said, great. I said, um, we want to move forward with this. When can you do it? He said, you know what? Let me get back to you. Um, I'm on the road right now. When I get back to my uh, office, I will. His office is probably his dining room table. Um, I'm not judging. Uh, so he says, I'll, I'll, so, so I'll, I'll get back to you. So he texts me two dates and times. Okay. 
I can do it Friday at um, Friday, 9.30 in the morning, or I can do uh, Monday at noon. Right. And I said, no, 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 let's do Friday. Let's, let's do get Friday this ball rolling. He replies, okay. This is all by text. Right. Wake up Friday morning. Now, I've already got my broker, my real estate broker. She's already going to be there. Great gal. Um, uh, the uh, seller's broker already confirmed. She's going to be there. Never met the woman. Um, I text the home inspector on Friday morning to say, hey, just want to make sure that we are still good for 930 today. And he replies, we never confirmed it, so I'm not available. Did you did you Which, send him a screenshot of the no, conversation? I did not because that because literally that was the most recent communication we had between us. It was right above it. Got so it. I replied to him and said, How did we not confirm? You gave me two times, I picked one, and you wrote okay. And the man, the this is this is the part that bothers me. It's not All the right. fact that he listen, as somebody with with um who has improved with his calendar management. Yes, I understand. I understand that not everybody is is going to be perfect when it comes to managing their calendar. So I said. So I, I replied to him like, "How did we not confirm?" And he replies, "I can do Monday at two <laughs> thirty." At which point I said, um, "Well, I, I I need you there at nine thirty today, not Monday." And he replies, "I already made other plans." I can't break them. At which point I call my broker. She reaches out to another um, in, uh, home inspector that I had I had talked to on the phone, decided not to go with. Um, that man said, I can make it at 11 today. So we did the home inspection at 11. Then the, uh, the, the first home inspector writes me back after I've already made other plans and says, right. hey, I can, I can now do three o'clock today. Do you still want it? And I wrote, no, I don't. And that was the end of the time. This this gentleman not once said, I'm, I'm sorry. That's all he had to say. Yeah. But it literally was, there was no explanation on his part how he did. He, he, we never confirmed. Of course we did. From that point on, all his communication was, well, I can do this time. Do you want me? I could do that time. That is my beef of the week. I, I would say uh, legitimate beef. That would aggravate me. Thank you. Oh, was it aggravating? How did the home inspection go, by the way? Um, there's no air conditioning. Um, the heat works, but okay. there's no cold air coming out of the uh, unit. I mean, by the time you move in, by the time you close, you're probably in August. So, I mean, you're you're literally weeks from the fall. You're literally weeks from the end of hot podcaster summer. Hot podcaster summer. Mm. So I think you can go without it. Think well. I'm I, I'm thinking maybe we can negotiate uh, a uh, you know a, a monetary discount on the purchase price, or just tell them that you need to have it fixed prior to closing. Okay. Well, here's my question to you. Sure. You would you rather a dollar discount, or would you rather that they 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 um that they hire somebody to fix it? I mean, I would rather them hire somebody to fix it because are you going to want to have to worry about handling that post-closing? Well, yeah, but like do, you, do, you, do you trust that the person that they are hiring, they're not saying, listen, just get it to work, you know, quickly? Well, no, you would, you would need to, you would need to get the, you would need to get a copy of the receipt showing that they used a license. Like we had that situation when we purchased our current home mm -hmm. is we needed, uh, we needed radon remediation. And the guy was like, Oh yeah, I got it. I got, I hired someone to bring them in. And when our realtor was like, all right, just send over their licensing and contact information. He's like, like he like went silent for a day. And then really? he was like, Oh, well I found it. Cause he was just going to have somebody come in and half ass it. So sure. you, you need yeah, to, sure. you know, again, it's, it's up to you. I mean, Personally, I would want working AC when I move in. Like, do you want, if you're moving in July or August, do you want that apartment to be air conditioned as you're moving all this stuff into your apartment? You, when you say as I am moving this stuff into my apartment. <laughs> as you're directing you're, the people moving. Yeah, apartment. yeah. You're implying that I will actually be lifting a box. Um, well, but you'll be there. This right? body is not meant to be lifting anything anymore. All right. Fair point. Fair point. Ron. Yeah. 
I know you're I know you're drinking your pickle uh your pickle teeny right now. Yes. What is um what's bothering you? Um so this week, Brian, I gotta say this is one that, that you've used uh, over the over the past couple of months. It's the weather, Brian. The weather has been absolutely ridiculous this past week. Yep, yep. Um, it has either been hot and muggy or it has been ridiculous storm conditions. We have been under um, flash flood advisory here. Um, the only good thing is that um, my my water systems in the basement have been completely tested uh, by the rainfall, and uh, we're dry. We're dry as a baby's body. That's great. That's great. Yes. Well, no, I mean, uh, you just, just, you, you, go. No, I was just going to say, it was just, uh, even earlier, I, I was, uh, lights flickered a little bit. We had a a pretty intense thunderstorm, so I wasn't even sure if we would be able to do this broadcast, uh, but the storm seemed to have passed by at this point. And, um, how has the weather affected you? Um, you know, it's it's just frustrating because you want to like sit outside, you want to relax, maybe have a cup of coffee in the morning. But when you walk out and it's just hot and muggy and sticky and gross, um, it's uh, it's it's a tough uh, tough situation. We've um, we've hit that time of year where um, by the time I get to the subway in New York, it has already caused me to sweat through my undershirt and sweat into my work shirt to the point where. Um, literally I have just, I've sweated through as I get on the subway and it's so hot and muggy waiting on the subway platform that by the time I get onto the air conditioned subway car, I am just profusely raining sweat down my face. And it is an embarrassing look when I get to work because my, 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 my work shirt, most of them are blue has, is just glued to the back just literally soaking wet. The front is soaking wet. Then as soon as I walk into the office, people start talking to me as if like, Hey, let's start the work day and don't real and, and are, have are completely um, ignoring the fact that this man needs to put cold water on his face. This man needs to stand in air conditioning and drink a, a large bottle of water to start to cool off before he can start integrating um uh, work into his uh, uh, life. I mean, would it make sense for you to maybe wear like a, a short sleeve polo to work and then carry with you um, your dress shirt and undershirt to change into when you get there? Would it be smart? Yes, but I'm not that guy. All right. Well, it's not going to get any easier for you, Brian, uh, as the the world had its hottest day ever uh, recorded globally last Monday, July 3rd. Um, the average global temperature reached 62.62 degrees Fahrenheit, surpassing the August 2016 record of 62.46 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, the southern U.S. suffering the worst. Um, in China, uh, temperatures above 95 degrees. North Africa has seen temperatures close to 122 degrees um, while uh, in Antarctica, uh, they hit a high of 47.6 degrees Fahrenheit. So you're saying Antarctica is above um, uh, the freezing point? Uh, it is, yes. Uh, climate well, scientist please, Frederick uh... Otto said, this is not a milestone we should be celebrating. It's a death sentence for people and ecosystems. So should I be buying real estate at this point? I mean, um, I'm literally on the Hudson. Maybe that's a bad idea. I mean, you're probably you're better off on the Hudson than maybe along like a coastal line. Uh, and how high up? How high up in the building is your uh, your your new place? Fourth floor. Know? Fourth floor out of four. I mean, at least you're close to the top, so you can be hella backed out. Um, when, oh, hundred percent. When when the uh, when the storms come. If I get onto my roof with a running jump, I can probably land directly in the Hudson. I, I, you know, I would. So, all right. So you're not able to lift boxes to move into your apartment, but you, you can jump into the Hudson from your, from your building. Well, the, 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 the fallacy in my comment right off the bat was the running jump. (laughs) Um, I am not running, nor will I be jumping. Neither By the way, uh, should we tell everybody what today, Sunday, June 9th, is the celebration of? What is um, what is it a celebration of? I mean, it popped up in my calendar, um, apparently, and you put it in my calendar, so I would I assume did. it would have popped up in your calendar as well. Uh, we are celebrating calendar. your left meniscus, Brian. Yes, 
It has been um, uh, two years since I had my left meniscus cut um, and surgically repaired. Um, and uh, I'm going to tell you something. Left knee doing great, right? Good. Eh, not so much. I mean, is, I did is, not realize uh, that that calendar item was on your calendar as well. Uh, you added it to both my and my wife's calendar. And, and sure enough, it popped up today. I'm like, oh, well, today is a very special day. Apparently, it will be on there in perpetuity or until Google goes out of business. That does sound like something I would do. <laughs> uh, Brian, it's time for stories of the week, uh, the mm -hmm. stories that we want to make sure that we get to. Um, what was your story of the week, Brian? All right. My story of the week takes us all the way to the United Kingdom. Across the pond, um, if you will. Across the pond, if you would, um, where a dialysis patient um, was, uh, how do I say this politely? I'm just going to go right into the article. All right. A UK nurse had sex with a dialysis patient in his car, then failed to get help when he um, suffered a heart attack, Ooh. of which it, um, it turned um, fatal as he died in his car. Um, she recently um, uh, went through a uh, disciplinary hearing. Penelope Williams, 42, was found with a long-term patient um, after he died in the back of his car with his trousers down. According to the British Telegraph, she initially told cops in Wales, which I believe is north of England, um, no. that she only met the man who was not identified. I don't know. No. Um, that it was only that she only met the man um, because he messaged her to say that he was not feeling well. Um, so she went out into the parking lot to check on him. One thing led to another. Um, Williams, who did have another partner, originally denied any sexual relationship with the man and said she merely sat in the back of his car for 30 to 45 minutes, um, mm. then said that he started groaning and then suddenly died. However, the nurse later admitted that she had actually been having a year long affair with him um, and that he had been getting regular treatment and that they had met that night for sex. So Penelope Williams um, literally holding the nursing uh, profession on her shoulders um, that, you know, she is so wants to make sure that her patients have such a great experience with dialysis that she's willing to have sex with them. But then really, in my opinion, um, just ruins the whole thing by um, not going out for help or, uh, or at least admitting some type of CPR when, um, when her uh, sexual partner has a heart attack and dies. Now, is she facing any charges because of this? Any disciplinary action? I would think. Oh, she's losing her license. She's, she, the, <laughs> okay. she's definitely losing her license. I don't believe she committed a crime. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, eventually, you know, she waited for a colleague who finally called the ambulance so that, uh, when they got there. Uh, but by that point, it was too late. Um uh, the patient was listed as uh, having heart failure, chronic kidney disease triggered by a medical episode. Mm. Um, does not look like she's facing any charges, um, but certainly um, I know that I would not be having sex with her because I wouldn't trust her that if I was, if I suffered a heart attack, that she would get medical attention um, or medical help, even though she has been completely trained on how to provide that medical help. Sure. I mean, I think you got to you got to back that up with the life alert system. If sure. You're, if you're if you're start dating that woman. So is it safe to say that Penelope Williams is the Ron and Brian podcast listener of the week? I mean, I think that's a, that's a fair bet. Good. Ron, what's your story of the week? Uh, so my story of the week, Brian, it goes to Florida. We do love ourselves some Florida uh, where Murder. this week, uh, Governor Ron DeSantis uh, signed measure SB 1416, uh, which, uh, which, re which basically overhauls the state's alimony laws and does away what is referred to as permanent alimony. Apparently in the state of Florida, um, if you get a divorce and uh, you do not remarry, um, you collect alimony in perpetuity. Um, now, apparently it, uh, it sets up a process where ex-spouses who make alimony payments can seek modifications um, to alimony agreements when they want to retire. It will allow judges to reduce or terminate alimony support or maintenance payments uh, after considering a number of factors. Now, the story itself, Brian, mm -hmm. is not the reason why this is the story of the week. Mm -hmm. 
what what uh, what I enjoyed, maybe it's cruel on my part, is the number of older conservative women in the mm -hmm. state of Florida that mm -hmm. have been Ron DeSantis supporters um, mm -hmm. who have now they feel victimized, Brian. Of course, they have been. They, this is this law, which um, I believe is retroactive. Um, no, not the right well, word. Well, it, it goes into effect. Uh, it went into effect July first. It's not retroactive, but now um, any any uh, spouse, any ex spouse that has this permanent alimony can now start applying to the court for relief. Got it. That's what I meant. What I meant was that it it is not only for new cases. Correct. Um, yes. But it is if you have been receiving alimony, your you know um, as your form of uh, revenue now, um, your ex can go to court in Florida and have that um, alimony eliminated. Um, so let me ask you a question. Um, yes, these uh, conservative Florida female voters, um, divorcees, if you if if you would, um, right? How are they feeling about Ron DeSantis right now? Uh, they have they have turned against him. Uh, so don't say gay. Didn't bother them. Um, nope. Stripping the rights of LGBTQ plus and trans people, not an issue. Um, cool. Going after the uh, the nation, the the state's largest employer, Disney, not a problem. But now, nope. since all these women are like, well, how how am I supposed to support myself in retirement? Mm -hmm. Now that it's impacting them, now they have an issue with Governor Ron DeSantis. You almost sound um, surprised that they are uh ron yes what are you wearing oh my oh i'm sorry did i not show this off earlier we, we've talked about some new merch drops and this is take a peek this is the new ron and brian podcast hockey sweater that's right it's not a jersey it's a sweater um emboldened with the huge logo on the front um i'll try and turn around uh, you know, name and number on the back. Um, again, this is a sample that we received um, and we are hopefully uh, we're in the process of negotiating with the uh, the manufacturer. Uh, we'll hopefully get this into our web store sooner rather than later. Now, I have a question. How did you become number 51? Um, I asked them to pick just a random number. I'm like, you know, um, since this is a sample, just pick whatever number you'd like and put it on, on the back of my jersey. But I feel like you should have gotten number 49. Well, why is that, Brian? Because I'm the champ. Oh, oh I'm boy. the fucking champ. And this belt, this belt is, is going to be with me at least, at least through the next three Super Bowls. Because I don't plan on, on I don't plan on losing our Super Bowl bet anytime soon. Well, but that is a beautiful. Can I just see the front of that one more time? Of course. That is you such can. an amazing print job. I there's absolutely no degradation or pixelation from what I see. No, it's uh they they did a fairly good job on it. And as far as the number, Brian, all I can say is dress for the job you want, not the job you have. You bastard. You always have <laughs> a good witty comeback. You they, it just comes so naturally to one of the things I'm most jealous of. Um, I didn't, you know, so going back to that story, Allie brings up a good point. Um, another ploy to try and make women stay married. Uh, very true. Um, but th again, this just this just falls in line with uh, some of the more draconian uh, laws of uh, that Florida has put into place. Um, but Florida, not surprisingly, also is part of one of our favorite segments. Uh, fuck around and find out mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, why that is because of the impact um, that the uh, the DeSantis administration is having uh, in the state of Florida. Uh, first off, the uh, Orange County, which is really considered kind of the uh, the tourism seat of sure. Florida, uh, right, has right. for the first time in two years, um, tourist tax dollars coming into Orange County have dropped two months in a row. Um, in April, 
Uh, Orange County took in about $33 million in tourist development tax money. In May, that number went down to $26 million. That is a 7% drop, almost a 22% decline month yeah. over month. May, traditionally, when uh, you start having schools get out, you have Memorial Day weekend. Typically, mm -hmm. you see an increase, not seeing it this year. And in addition, there are a number of conventions that have started to pull out of Florida, again, over state's recent laws. Um, they lost the, I know you were going to go down to Central Florida for this one. This was sure. the, the Con of Thrones convention oh, uh, yeah, celebrating yeah. Uh, the Game of Thrones HBO show. Yes. Uh, would have attracted nearly 2,000 people to the Hyatt Regency Hotel in, uh, in August. They have canceled. Um, in addition, uh, the 2024 AnitaB.org Grace Hopper celebration, as well as the 2024 National Society of Black Engineers, and then the 2027 Association of Perioperative Registered Nurses Global Surgical Conference and Expo canceled and moved to another state. Um, thousands of hotel rooms, thousands of tax dollars mm -hmm. leaving Florida. And if yep. you... Uh, if you look at uh, TikTok, there are a number of Florida-based tourism uh, locations and Uber drivers and things like that talking about the lack of tourist dollars, even sure. over the July 4th weekend, uh, flowing into, uh, into Florida or not flowing into Florida in this case. Well, it's, it's also affecting their one of their uh, uh, other primary industries, which is agriculture. Um, DeSantis uh, uh, had the legislature um, pass uh, a law that increased the penalties for um, um, uh, companies that were employing uh, undocumented uh, workers. Right. Uh, drastically um, raised the uh, penalties uh, such that um, from what I have read, um, farming and construction industries in the state of Florida um, have been just, um, I don't want to say decimated, but the um, they are struggling to find labor to uh, provide for, um, you know, in, from, a, from an agricultural per perspective. Somebody has to go out into the field and pick the vegetables and fruits. Sure. Um, you know, some of that can be uh, mechanized by machinery. But, uh, it, you know, it, it, that is a small fraction of the, of the working farms that are out there. So right now you've got um, undocumented workers that are uh, afraid to show up to work because they fear they're going to be arrested and deported. So they are fleeing the state of Florida for other um, uh, locales where they feel it might be a little safer for them to work. And as a result, it is um, a construction industry, which is very dependent on the economy, uh, struggling um, to, you know, the trades, you know, they're not providing the manpower they need and uh, farms are struggling. Um, we can expect higher um, uh, uh, prices at the grocer. Right. In addition to that, um, they just recently passed a law in Florida uh, where they will now not recognize the driver's licenses from five states. I believe it was Minnesota, um, Connecticut, a few others, any, any state for whatever reason sympathetic to uh, immigration and migrants. Um, if you get pulled over in the state of Florida with a Connecticut driver's license, for example, you will be ticketed sure. for not having a valid driver's license. <sighs> so I'm sure that will just just lead people to really want to sure. uh, travel down there. Listen, you know, it is um, the culture wars are uh, just... They are they are causing a schism in you know between uh, uh, between uh, the, the the country and it's it there are you we were reaching the point where there are genuine ramifications that are kicking in you know Listen. jobs are being lost companies are going out of business go anti woke go broke as they say absolutely but you know drink Bud Light. Um, so they fucked around. They're finding out. Also, uh, people in the state of Alabama uh, fucking around and finding out that where at least four people, including a father, have died in recent months uh, for trying a new and uh, obviously deadly TikTok trend uh, called boat jumping. What? Fairly, fairly self-explanatory. Um, basically, 
Um, people jump or flip off the back of speeding boats into the water um, only to break their necks on the wake behind the boat and drowned. Uh, in the last six months, they have had four drownings that were easily avoidable. How are, are we broken up about this? I mean, it's, I think what is what is sad is uh, in in each of these cases it has happened in front of like friends and family members and in sure. a couple of the and actually in in each instance um, the deaths were recorded because they were recording it for TikTok and you were you literally have wives recording uh, the last moments of their husbands' lives as they jump off the back of the boat and break their neck and, and drown and die. Can we get a copy of these videotapes? Is that, is that possible? <laughs> I, I mean, can certainly, I can certainly see if we can get that for you. Because I, okay, here's the real question, Ron. And I think you and I have, you know, I, I'd like to say that we have similar, you know, um, sensibilities. I think you're a little bit more respectful than probably. I am in certain, possibly. In, probably. What? You're not supposed to be so quickly. You're supposed to. Be, no, no, no. But like, would you watch those videos? Probably. Because one of my, you know, my, earlier on this week, one of my beefs of the week was friends who do not watch the videos that you forward to them. Uh, and why is that, Brian? You made you you let slip in a uh, in a, a text conversation I had with you that you are not religiously um, following um, every video that I send and watching it. You are picking and choosing which of the video links I send that you um, expose yourself to. And well, that hurt my feelings. I mean, to be fair, it's because your goal is to pervert uh, my For You page on TikTok. Yes, uh, yes. Now, again, I would say roughly 30% of the TikTok videos you, you forward me are already taken down by the time that I go to watch them. So that should say something right there. And then I would say at another high percentage, I can just tell from the screenshot that it is, it typically falls into a uh, public breastfeeding situation. Yes. Uh, it's uh, someone uh, missing or deformed arms, you know, conjoined twins. Like there's, there's a lot there that uh, you're, you're trying to throw into my algorithm. And I, and I just have to say no at times. But I feel like if I have gone to the effort of sending it to you, you should feel an obligation to look at it. Yeah, you're more than welcome to hold that opinion. I feel differently. Speaking of which, what is the um, uh, community standards for breastfeeding videos on TikTok? Uh, clearly, they are they are allowed because you, are they? Because you, you certainly find a number of them. You just said that like thirty percent of the things I send you are already taken down by the time you 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 get to look at them. So maybe they're not allowed. I couldn't tell you what that content is. Only that's for you to have a conversation with your God and determine what's comfortable. Oh, my God is very aware of my For You page. Um, well, let's not. We have one more story and fuck around and find out. And actually, it would have been back when we used to do this week in racism. It would have fallen under that category. But mm -hmm. the, uh, the follow up from that falls into fuck around and find out. And so this is about Blair Featherman. Uh, age 49, she is uh, referred to as a poolside Karen uh, because mm -hmm. she went off on a, uh, a racist tirade against a Latino family for not knowing uh, what Hermes is. Is that, am I saying that right? Hermes, the, the designer? Hermes. 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 She Hermes. would have to yell at me Hermes. too as well. Here is her Hermes. looking absolutely Hermes. not crazy whatsoever Hermes. in this TikTok video. Hermes. What? Hermes, there we go. Hermes. Um, so, uh, so she, yeah, so she, she went viral in, in the worst of ways. Look at that crazy look on her face. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When, that when that this, is an angry white woman. When this TikTok was posted, uh, you know, going, going off against this Latino family. Uh, and then everybody started to search her, her history and found out that, uh, she declared bankruptcy back in 2019 and apparently only mm -hmm. had $120 to her name. Uh, this article in the daily mail lists out all of the people that she owed money to, uh, as sure. recently as 2022, mm -hmm. um, but it's just hilarious because she's trying to trash on people and then uh, she gets dragged uh, across the internet. 
Well, I mean, uh, the video starts in the middle of her rant, but she is literally cursing out a family at a um, uh, a shared pool in a residential complex where she apparently lives with her husband, um, where she is screaming about them having a, um, a trash Mexican party um, in public space. And you can hear the people responding like, you know, we live here too. And right. She is just out of control. And at a good point in the video, the, the boyfriend's kid apologized. Uh, yeah. Why is, why is the boyfriend still with, with the, her, if she's a little, I mean, we do like crazy women where we come from. Um, but that's, if, if she's, if she, if she's as crazy as shown in that video, then you know that she is good in bed. I, I mean, you said it, not me. Oh, I know. I'm getting glared at right now. I'm refusing <laughs> to make I I am refusing to make eye contact right now. All right, uh, Brian. Uh, a story came out. Uh, your favorite former mayor of New York City, Bill De Blasio. Bill De Blasio, uh, and, my man, and his uh, wife, uh, Sherlane McRae, uh, sure. staying married but separating uh, to date other people. Um, they're sure. also going to continue uh, living together. Yes. Listen, they were New York City's first family. Bill de Blasio, I believe he won two terms as mayor. Look at that photo of him and his lesbian wife, his future lesbian wife. Um, what was her name again? Sherlane? Uh, Sherlane McRae. Well, she previously True. identified as a lesbian. There's no ah, indication okay. that she will be moving forward with a relationship with a woman, but it's up to her if she does. Let's let's be honest here. The New York Post, the New York media sensationalized her um, her background. Hold on. Dominic coming in here with uh, he's gay and he should just come out. We had no idea. Janelle just thinks the whole thing is funny. Um, not a funny matter. Hold on. She really thinks it's funny. Oh, wow. Wow. Um, but they, they listen for 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 the time that he was mayor. Um, I would not describe him as a particularly popular mayor. Uh, new, he, he never really felt that he was, uh, you know, connecting with the typical New Yorker. Um, uh, I, I, I'd hate to admit, I'd hate to believe that some of the um, uh, anger towards him was that um, he had uh, 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 an interracial marriage, that his children were, um, were, were, were racially mixed. I would hate to believe that that was somewhat of the, of the background. Um, they did not seem to be particularly comfortable with each other. I will certainly say that. Um, she, I think he even gave her a uh, paid gig um, in his administration, which I think was also not particularly um, something that New Yorkers uh, looked kindly on, nor was the fact that he was a Boston Red Sox fan and he cut his pizza with a fork and knife. So he really had an uphill battle as a mayor. Um uh, lived in Park Slope, Brooklyn, neighborhood I used to live in. Um, Ron, you lived near Bill Cosby. I used to live near Bill de Blasio, close. Um, however, so so they announced this week that they are going to be separating, but they are not moving out of their house. They're going to continue to live under the same roof as they co-parent. Uh, my take on this is, why are we announcing this? Why is this being uh, public knowledge just go out and start um, just start living your life. Do whatever you want. And if anybody does ask you, um, hey, you're uh, you know, I noticed you were having dinner with that uh, woman. Uh, where was your wife? Um, it's none of your business. Well, I think it's kind of preemptive so that it just avoids a lot of uh, conjecture and speculation. Um, this is uh, this is a not at all awkward looking photo, I think, from Halloween because they're both dressed in uh, in Star Trek gear. And why why does she have to wear? Why does she have to be the red shirt? They always die on the show. Um, why is his hand look so awkward on her hip? Like, it's, <laughs> like, like I've seen I've seen celebrities at those uh, at Chiller Theater and those signing conventions have uh, be more comfortable putting their hands on uh, total strangers than he does on his own wife. Yeah, and it, and it looks like he took that that Star Trek shirt like right out of the package. Like you can still see the crease sure. across the top of it, like it just came out of a out of a plastic bag. Can I also say one more thing? Um, I, I am uh, I the, you um, can. the cuff the cuff on his shirt is driving me insane. Which part? I, like, is that know, how far apart the uh, the stripes are? No, just how much extra space there is <laughs> on the shirt cuff 
gotcha. from his elbow. Like we all know, I like a high tech, uh, a high neckline on my shirt. Right. I also like a tight cuff. That that literally looks like the um, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? Uh, the the bell bottom jeans <laughs> of similar. of arm cuffs. Hate yep. that. Hate that. That would drive me insane. Um, what else do we have? Oh, your uh, one of your favorite uh, activities of the entire year took place on Fourth of July, the Nathan's oh. Hot Dog Eating yes. Championship. Uh, for yes. a while, uh, looked like the event may not take place uh, because of the weather. In fact, they had announced the cancellation. Mm -hmm. But Joey Chestnut, the legend mm -hmm. that he is, stood his ground and said, "We're fucking going forward with this." And We're sure enough. It. They, they held it a couple hours late, but he defended mm -hmm. his title. Uh, only 62 hot dogs this time, I think. Yeah, it was 62. His record, I think, is is in the mid-70s. I 74, think it's 74, 76. 76. Yeah. I thought he did 76. Listen, people, you got 10 minutes to eat um, as many hot dogs with buns. You have to eat the bun. Um, and uh, Ron, that was your message for all your girlfriends back in college, if I'm not correct. You've got to eat the bun. Um, I could be wrong on that. I mean, I, okay. my memory might be a little um, hazy back then. Um, but it is, you know, listen, uh, the lady and I were at Nathan's last weekend. Uh, we ate two, um, each, right. uh, the ability to have, um, another 74. I don't know how, um, but you, you gotta hold it in. You right. gotta, you, you gotta just, you know, um, you can't uh, regurgitate it. Um, just an utter, uh, it's an impressive um, uh, display of, um, of of stomach expansion for, you know, really is, uh, um, I can't, I can't even imagine how you do that. But you can also say, I mean, listen, they do it every year outside on July 4th. Um, it's going to be humid. You're right ah, next to the you. ocean down in Hope Coney right. I don't know how these competitors are um, putting up the kind of numbers that they do. Now this was uh, this was Chestnut's sixteenth uh, uh, title in the last mm -hmm. seventeen years. Although some people point out uh, Takura Kobayashi um, hasn't uh, competed since two thousand nine because he would not sign a contract with Major League Eating. Sure. Um, do you sure. think that that uh, that we need to put an asterisk next to Joey Chestnut's record because of that? I think that there's a stain on Major League Eating. You know, but I listen, I'm not about exclusivity. Never have. Understood. Um, um, you know, if if Kobayashi wants to partake in, in different eating contests, I think he should be allowed to. I don't I, I don't necessarily agree that if you are going to participate in major league eatings, Nathan's um, um, hot dog eating contest once a year, that you have to sign away all your rights to be able to um, participate in um, specific other events. I just don't get it. Now, here is some other uh, world record uh, feats that Joey Chestnut has reached. He ate 18 pounds, 10 ounces of spicy shrimp cocktail in eight minutes and also ate 126 tacos in eight minutes. Yeah, but what was on the taco? I mean, there's a big difference. Are we talking like a, ta a Taco Bell soft shell or are we talking, you know, something you would get on a, from a food truck at Broken Goblet? Uh, you know, I don't have an answer to that. Uh, we can uh, I'd ask Matt. Uh, Matt uh, has not returned from uh, going to see fireworks um, on July 4th. Um, sure. A little concerned as of now, but hopefully. He'll, At what uh, point he'll do we out. call the police and file a missing persons report? I mean, he's an adult, Brian. I, I don't know. If anybody knows where Matt is, please just, you know, just, you know, just, uh, we have our, we have our phone number, which I don't think we've shared in a while. Uh, if we've anyone wants to it. contact us, you can reach us at two, six, seven, six, two, seven, 10 62. So if you happen to know, uh, where Matt Beaker is, uh, please give us a shout. Let us know. We're sure. very, very concerned. Uh, Brian, well, I don't know about very, very concerned. Right. Just say we're concerned. We're concerned. All right. Yeah. Very might be, yeah. it might be an exaggeration. Uh, next up, Brian, uh, it's time for But the Drag Queens Are the Problem. Uh, we start the Drag off Queens, this Ron, week. they are ruining this world. We need to protect the children from the drag queens because they have no place in, in, in schools, in public um, displays. You know, we need to protect our children because the drag queens are the ones 
who are, who are, who are just violating our children. Clearly. Clearly the issue. Uh, but again, maybe an exception here where a Florida attorney has been deported back to the U.S. after spending two and a half years in a Cambodian prison for sexually abusing four kids. He now faces 170 years behind bars in the United States if convicted. Uh, this is Rupe James Klein, uh, currently under house arrest. What? Uh, at his Tampa residence. Um, after he was indicted by the DOJ back in February of 2021, he faces five counts of engaging in illicit sexual conduct in a foreign place and one count of possession. What? Sorry about that. I don't know why my phone started to ring. Um, and uh, where was I? Five uh, counts the charges engaging in illicit stuff. sexual and one count of possession of child exploitation materials, according to the DOJ. Um, he is accused of traveling to Cambodia in February and May of 2019 and paying to a sexually abused four children, all under the age of 15, on multiple occasions. Um, the alleged child rapist has pled not guilty to his charges and was released on $100,000 bond under the condition that he would be on 24-hour home detention with GPS monitoring. Hold on a second. So it's an American crime to travel to another country to go molest children. Uh, if you are an American citizen, yes. And right. you travel abroad for the sole purpose of, uh, you know, engaging in, uh, in sure. sex crimes or sex crimes with children. Uh, yes, you can be charged here in the U.S. But if I am a U.S. American citizen and I get on a plane and I fly to Cambodia so I can kill someone, that's not an American crime. I don't believe so. Why it is different, I don't know. I think it has something to do with uh, with like inner, you know, inner, not necessarily interstate trafficking, but like intercountry trafficking. But that would be, but would not, but would that not be a Cambodian court that needs to handle a case of a crime that's taking place in Cambodia? I'm not a lawyer, Brian. I don't know what you want from me. You know, for you someone who doesn't know head. where, no, no, for someone who doesn't know where Wales is in England, you're being very uppity right now. Apparently, Wales is to the west. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's to the west. It was pointed okay. out here. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. I can see that west, yeah. yes. It, it's to, to the west of England, not to the north. Well, speaking of uh, the UK, Brian, in London, the BBC said today that it is... What suspended. did the BBC say? They said that they have suspended a leading presenter who is alleged to have paid a teenager for sexually explicit photos. Um, as senior British politicians urged a rapid investigation, the broadcaster said it was working to establish the facts of a, quote, complex and fast moving set of circumstances. Um, the Sun newspaper reported allegations that the male presenter gave a youth forty five thousand dollars or thirty five thousand pounds starting in 2020 when the young person was 17. Um, neither the BBC star nor the youth was identified. $35,000 for some nude photos? Yes. Though the age of sexual consent in Britain is 16, it's a crime to make or possess indecent images of anyone under 18. Oh, my gosh. Listen, I need to start an OnlyFans. <laughs> well, Brian, it's the, uh, it's the drag queens that are the problem. Though. Yeah, the drag queens. It's not TV presenters. It's certainly not lawyers from Florida. Um, we don't need to do anything about that, but we need to go after the drag queens. Um, real quick question, because I, I know we're, we're running up on almost an hour here, but it's a very important question, Brian. What? What are you watching? Oh, I, I'm going to say this. This week, I took Ron recommendations. Okay. Um, I watched Hijack, the first three episodes on Apple TV, uh, starring Idris Elba. Yep. As a, um, I felt at times like I've I've seen this before. Um, it seems like a very popular um, uh, trope of uh, uh, you know main character is a passenger on an airplane that gets hijacked. Seen it before, um, but Idris Elba very entertaining. Um, he really does have such a command of the screen um, yes. when he is acting. Um, there's, it's a seven episode season, I believe, uh, okay. uh, they are releasing them one a week. I believe the next episode comes out on the 12th. Uh, so we'll yes, I believe you're correct. 
So I'll be watching that. I assume you and your wife are all caught up and will be continuing. We will, yes, without a doubt. Additionally, another Ron recommendation also on Apple TV. Uh, the lady and I watched the first season of Silo, mm. starring Tim Robbins and a bunch of people who I have never seen before. Really? You've um, never seen one- Common? Rap star Common you've never seen? I did not say that he was the only person that I knew from the movie. <laughs> I, I Yes, I've seen Common. Um, there's one one woman on there who also was on Ted Lasso, and she was in, I think it was Peaky Blinders. Um, but the, the main cast are people that I have never seen before. Um, saw, so watch the entire first season over the last couple of days. Um, good, not great. Right. Um, I felt that uh, Tim Robbins was very poorly, I want to say, directed in this. I've seen him act really well. This is not one of them. Um, he plays a uh, um, a director of IT, I guess, which is a powerful position in the silo. Uh, it's a futuristic story where um, humanity is now uh, relegated to living underground um, in a... So underground silo, silo um, yes. and they are not allowed to leave. And as uh, the uh, the utter punishment that you may receive by the Justice Department there is to be kicked out of the silo. Um, so it's uh, a decent. It's a decent premise. What was it? Ten episodes, um, each yes. forty five minutes or so. Uh, I felt like it, they could have done a better job casting. Um, the characters, but I don't know what the budget was. They may have pissed away the whole, you know, um, casting budget on Tim Robbins and Common. Um, Common with just, I mean, just one of the greatest, you know, black beards. You know, yeah. Not even a, a hint of gray in that. Um, but I watched, I, I, I knocked it out. Also a show on, um, I believe it's Netflix. I picked up the second season, maybe Apple TV, not really sure. Um, Tehran. Or, or as they like to pronounce oh, it. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> hold on. I'm just going to dry off the mic on that one. Um, I joined it in uh, the middle of the second season. Glenn Close um, plays an Israeli um, agent uh, who is running an operation in... And she is um, uh, basically... Uh, I think they're going after some... Uh, Iranian general or whatnot, all in the capital city of and um, really nailing uh, the pronunciation tonight. Well, you know what it is. I don't want to be just, you know, your average ignorant American and saying Tehran because right, it's not right, right. Tehran. It's not Tehran. It's no. Um But I, uh, so that's a show. I'm probably going to go back and watch season one. Okay. Uh, acting seems pretty good. They seem to have like a good, uh, pace and and, uh, and the stakes seem pretty hot, so I will I will be um, going back and checking out Tehran All on right. TV. Ron, right. yes, what are you watching? Or, uh, this, so watch- can, we should actually change this bit to what will Brian be watching in about three weeks? <laughs> so uh, I started caught a couple movies uh, at home this week. I watched uh, John Wick Chapter Four. Um, mm. I mean, basically, same formula as chapters one through three. Um, it is almost three hours long for some reason. Ooh. Does not need to be. Again, lots of great action. Uh, not really a story. So if you just like to watch shooting and 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 fight scenes and everything else, watch it. Does his dog die in the beginning of every movie, or is it just the first one and that's just the that's first one? Off? Okay. Just the first one. But there is a dog involved in chapter four that he ends up saving the life of. Spoiler alert. Mm, bringing the story full circle. Yes. Uh, I watched uh, Nefarious, uh, which is, it was kind of a low budget, it's supposed to be a horror movie. I would call it more of a thriller. Um, it was uh, basically the, the concept is it's about a psychiatrist that has to go uh, interview a death row inmate on the day of his execution um, to see if he is, uh, if he is sane or not. Um, if he can be executed and uh, it turns out that he claims the person, the prisoner claims he is possessed by a demon. So it becomes a whole, you know, good versus evil thing. Now I had heard, I I'd read a couple places that it was like Christian pop propaganda disguised really? as like a horror movie. And I, there was a part of it, like they get real into the whole abortion thing, how demons love abortion because it's an affront to God and whatnot. I'm like, well, that, 
Yeah, maybe could go either way. Uh, but then uh, doing a cameo towards the end of the movie is Glenn Beck. And I'm like, oh, well, clearly this is now Christian propaganda because who else would put Glenn Beck in a movie? Glenn Beck has a cameo in this? He does, yes. Okay, keep going. <laughs> um, again, it was watchable. It was decent, some good acting, um, but not a horror movie. There was really nothing okay. all that scary about it. Um, and also on Netflix, the new documentary about Wham! Um, George Michael Ooh. and Andrew Ridgely. Uh, very entertaining. Um, you know, uh, as someone who was a fan of, uh, of George Michael, um, growing up and also just shocking that everything Wham did, they were only together for four years. Right. And like, when you see how they, 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 I mean, they were, they were, they, they knew each other from when they were kids, they had formed a couple of bands, but then they formed Wham, you know, and just really, you know, within a year had wake me up before you go, go and careless whisper come out. Uh, just, I, I thought it was overall a little long. Could have, they stretched it a little bit. It's a, it's an hour and a half. It's not a docu-series. Um, but yeah, but I would recommend that. And also yeah. uh, based on your recommendation, uh, we started, we got into the bear season one. Oh, what were your thoughts? Uh, I like it so far. It's, yeah. uh, you know, it's again, it's, uh, it's not a, the storyline isn't a new one, you know, but sure. it's, uh, but I think it's well acted. I think it's well written. Um, I think it's a little repetitive in some of the storylines and sure. we're only about three episodes in, but I, I, I it's one I'm going to stick with and I'm, I'm interested do. to see how this plays out and how the second episode, how the second season goes. Keep me updated. Cause I, gen right. I think, I feel like as they, um, uh, continued through season one, they started to really find their groove. And, and that's what I had a feeling idea. like you can you can see like the, the episode one, I think, was kind of disjointed. And then you mm -hmm. can see them really start to find the characters and the storylines. And yeah, three. yes. I mean, I was you know, I was all ready to get into Brockmire and you said, Ron, go with the bear. It'll be a much better choice. And, and I appreciate you for saying that. Listen, I uh, Brockmire, it's still on my list of things to watch. Sure, sure. Um, Brian, they found cocaine in the White House. Cocaine. It it's an hour and two minutes to get to the cocaine in the White House. That was actually the uh, first. Time, if you remember before, I said that's the that's the that's the one story I want to talk about all week. That's the lead. Uh, but now it's like now it's interesting. So, you know, when when there is a uh, when there is a national uh, terrorist attack or crime, you know, the the DC sniper, uh, 9 11 Oklahoma City. Uh, they can find the most minuscule pieces of evidence sure. and track down uh, who the perpetrator is. But apparently, even though we have this little pouch of cocaine that probably has fingerprints and, and DNA mm -hmm. on it, they're already like, well, we're probably never going to know whose cocaine this is. That's usually meaning that they know exactly whose it yeah. is, but they don't want to say. Right. I mean, what I find interesting is everybody's jumping to the to the conclusion that it is Hunter Biden's cocaine. Right. Because he had a cocaine problem at some point in his life. Um, nobody is sitting there saying that they found it left over from Donald Trump Jr. I, you know, I'd be willing to go out and let me say it's it's Joe Biden's cocaine. Like he has leaned into this dark Brandon persona um, as he prepares for his 2024. I think he'll be up on the on the debate stage doing bumps off of his uh, off of his uh, his hand. Would it bother you if it turned out that it actually was Joe Biden's? Not really. No. Would it change your vote for him? <sighs> not not at this point. No. Same here. I would still vote for him, even if it was his. And that says something when when if you're doing coke, you're still better than a lot of the other options out there. Sure. Why not? Uh, what else? What else do you want to hit, Brian? We had another, a bunch of other stories, but I, I want to make sure we get to whatever it is you'd like to talk about before we get out of here. Before we get out of here, I think the story that I really wanted to hit was the QAnon leader oh. um, by the who goes by the name of Michael Protzman. Um, actually went. Let me start. I, I've. For the purpose of this story, I should start using past tense. So Apparently. Michael Protzman um, rose to a moderate level of fame um, during the early pandemic under um, uh, he was posting on uh, social media 
using a handle of negative 48 um, and became a, a, a voice of the QAnon movement. QAnon, obviously, for those people who um, uh, want to be reminded, was that um, there was supposed to be a um, member of the Trump administration who went who was posting under the name of Q, who was um, basically letting um, you know the, uh, the the general public know the inner workings, what was going on behind the scenes, as Donald Trump was going to be um, going after. Um, all of the, uh, how do I say this? Um, uh, the baby murderers, the, right. um, it was just, it was just one conspiracy theory after another. It was almost, it literally became a, okay, do you suckers believe this one? Well, I'm going to say, we're going to, we're going to up the now. Yeah. So it got to the point with Michael Protzman. He's not Q. He's just a QAnon leader. Right. Um, he's the one who, who, um, I believe it was in 2021, who made the announcement that um, John F. Kennedy is still alive, that John F. Kennedy JFK Jr. Jr. is still alive. Oh, no, right. no also John F. Kennedy. Oh, also JFK. That, he, went, he went above and beyond JFK Jr. and said, JFK, oh. uh, that, that whole thing in 68 was faked. Sure. Oh, I'm going to take it a step further. He says that Donald Trump is JFK Jr. in disguise. Interesting. Okay. Um... So you can already see this man's, how do I say this, handle on reality is a little off. Tenuous. However, Tenuous at his handle on his um, handlebars on his motorcycle, even more <laughs> um, uh, uh, lackadaisical. Um, Michael Protzman died on June 30th earlier this year, according to a Minnesota medical examiner in a motocross uh, accident. However, um, just to show you how fucking asinine uh, a lot of Americans are, the, his followers on social media are still standing behind him that um, they don't believe he's dead. They believe that this is part of his master plan and that he will reveal himself when the right time has come. Where'd Ron go? All right, I guess Ron just dip, just bailed on me. The man ditched, but that's what happened. So, as I was saying, so then um, sorry you're, about you're that. Gonna... I had a little little technical difficulty here. So, I, what happened there? I, I don't know what was going on. I was losing my my signal. I had to flip switch from the hardwire to the Wi Fi. So, apologize. Losing my signal. All right, Brian. Anything Brian. else before we get no. out of here and prepare? This is for... good. We've got to. We've got. Uh, we have to prepare for our Patreon. A lot of people are unaware. Um, you know, we don't really. We don't really push it very hard. Um, Ron, you and I are not the kind of people to sit there and say, "Please, sir, can I have some more?" Um, this podcast is free. Everybody watching right now, we appreciate all of you. Um, we'll never charge for this podcast. It's never going to go behind the paywall. At least one hour of free entertainment every week. That is um, that is one of the the bedrocks of the Ron and Brian podcast uh, uh, pact, if you would, um, with the people. Uh, however, one of the things that we have figured out is that you know, for the people that say, "Listen, we want to um, we want to join you. We would like you to help. You know, we want you to basically say, how can we?" Um, how can we get more content? We want to hear, you know, things um, that uh, are, are not really up for, uh, you know, the, the, the masses, something a little bit more personal. Um, we do a show uh, that we call After Dark. We we take, it takes place um, uh, as soon as After we're Dark. done with this podcast. It's, it's, it, we, we, we do it live um, on our Patreon. It's behind the paywall. For as little as $5 a month, you get the audio of that Patreon show um, for $10 a month, literally the cost of two cups of coffee, depending on, you know, what you're adding to your caffeine. Um, you get the uh, live stream. You get access to the, the, the entire pay, the archive. We've been doing it for what, about 18 years? Uh, roughly, give or take. So just the amount of content um, that we've got behind that paywall over on Patreon, um, it's a short way of helping us. It's, it's, it, it offsets some of the costs that Ron and I regularly incur um, to make sure that this podcast keeps going, um, helps offset those costs. 
Um, it's a way for you guys to say, hey, how can I help um, you guys for all your hard efforts? Well, we appreciate it. All you Patreon subscribers will be doing that in about 20 minutes. Everybody else, sure. if you want to go to ronandbrianpodcast.com, click in the upper right-hand corner, join at the $10 level or higher, and uh, you can get the link for tonight's After Dark. Brian, I uh, got to say another fantastic episode in the books here. Yeah. Um, any other comments before we wrap up and get ready for After Dark? No, this one just felt real good. It just hit different. Yeah, this, this, this one made me feel proud. All right. Well, thank you all for joining us here tonight for episode 265. Patreon subscribers, we will see you in a few minutes. Everybody else, we will catch you next week. Thank you for joining us on the Ron and Brian podcast. We're live each week on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. You can find prior episodes, links to our social media, and everything else Ron and Brian at ronandbrianpodcast.com. See you again next week.